Okay, so this is a parcel I've been waiting for for a while. Um, this is the TN4 T200. Um, it's a larger format SLA printer. Um, I've been using the um, I've been using the Photon at the moment, the AnyCubic Photon, and I've had some fantastic results with the printer. I really have. The, the only real issue with the Photon is, is, is the build space. Um, the, the platform is, I think, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll look it up and we can, we can put it in the comments if needed, but most people know the Photon and it, and it is fairly small. Um, I'll get the official fact sheet out in a second, which I'm assuming is going to be part of this parcel. But um, the dimensions on this are quite considerably larger as a build volume. And um, and they're really gonna they're really gonna make a huge difference in what what I can and can't print it. So this one is from AliExpress. Uh, there's plenty of people on here and all over the place that will give you really bad reviews of using AliExpress or buying Chinese printers or whatever. That's fine. I personally have used AliExpress for a few years and I've not had any issues. That does not negate everybody else's issues because a lot of people have had some very serious issues with, uh, with buying anything from AliExpress. Not just, oh Jesus, not just printers, but all sorts of things. Um, so, well packed so much like the AnyCubic um, the, the Photon realistically this should be fairly plug and play to be honest there shouldn't there shouldn't really be too much configuration um, this is this cost me 732 pound which is cheaper than say the Wanaho Duplicator 8 and the build volume is actually larger in this than the D8 so I'm quite keen to um, to see how this prints if you've wanted large format SLA I would say that 700 or nearly, nearly let's let's call it 800 with delivery and VAT and um, obviously I had to pay an import fee and everything else so so let's call it let's call it 800 um, I think 800 is pretty fair for for a fairly large format SLA printer uh, it comes with very similar accessories to um to an any cubic to be honest so you get your you get your little vat of resin this case this one actually comes with a half liter vat of resin which is pretty good um i think any cubic comes with normally like a with a 250 i think it's either a 250 or maybe it's a 500 mil i can't remember um obviously you'll be doing larger prints in this so the resin will be uh slightly you'll be using more resin I haven't really seen any reviews or any information on this printer um, anywhere if I'm honest um, I went for it because it's such a large format and what I need is a larger format from what I have read online which Unfortunately, when it comes to these sort of things, you do kind of have to take with a bit of a pinch of salt. The theory is that this runs on a nano DLP um, operating software. Okay, so quick walk through of the menu. When I turned this on, it was unsurprisingly in Chinese. You go to the green settings piece, and then I don't know if you can see in there, but there is English or Chinese. They are both in Chinese when you... Um, when you go into the menu so it's actually you can't tell which one is English or which one isn't without using like an auto translator um, I cheated a little bit I used Bixby 
on my Samsung phone and it did actually translate it. But the right hand one for me was English, so I'm assuming the right hand one would be for you as well. There's a net oh, there's a network settings. Now this comes with an Ethernet cable and it does say network IP versus Wi-Fi IP. That insinuates to me that you can set this up on Wi-Fi. Maybe initial setup is going to end up being on uh, over network. Um, and then you use Nano DLP, which supposedly this is based on, to slice your models and send it and send it over. Very possible. I don't really know how to set that up as yet. We go to printing. There's two models on here already. There's one called Fanguard. There's one called Auto Calibration Plate. I don't know what that means, and I don't know how you use it. As I said, all of the um, all of the in instructions at the moment are uh, are in Chinese. We'll get to that in a second. Projector. This is very much. This is just a UV test, from what I can tell. So if you press grid, then this comes up as a grid. You press white. This comes up as I guess white. And then you press black and it does pretty much the same as white does. But anyway, they work and that's what matters. Control. This is your Z height control. So you press down and the plate goes down. And you press up and the plate goes up. There is also a home button. I am not going to press that yet. The reason being is when you home on the... Um, when you home on the any cubic photon, this plate is actually loose. There's a, there's a screw at the top that you undo, and that makes this place loose. This plate is fixed. Now, I'm assuming I need to loosen these screws here at the side, and that will give you your pitch and your yaw, I guess. Um, it, it gives you your front and back balance, so you can perfectly level the plate to your screen. It obviously needs to be perfectly level, um, and also it will it will sort of give you a bit of a buffer in height as well if everything goes wrong. There is, well, if you can see, a little Z stop there, and that it corresponds to the little nut at the back there. The problem is, is I don't know if that's been calibrated yet to perfectly set the Z height, or whether I'm going to press home and this is going to try and make a discerned effort to go directly through the new screen that's there. Last but not least is an information piece. Now this has two QR codes, one for sales, one for support. So next thing is to go through on that Q on that support QR code and see if they've got any instructions online that are in English. So that will be next. You can see the front of this is open. This is the door. It's not very high tech. It just literally slots in underneath and there's a magnet that holds this in at the top. So that's what holds that in. Give you a quick rundown of my office space where I'll be using this. Um, it is worth noting that I do use the Anycubic Photon in here. And whilst it's a fairly decent sized office, um, I don't run any specific ventilation. Um, I've been doing that now for probably two, three months. Um, I am not ill. I run the I run the photon for quite a lot of time. Um, I sort of I run the photon probably eight to ten hours a day. Um, it's currently being repaired because I managed to break it. I broke it, not its fault. Um, so anyway, so I've got a CR10 there. I've got my GTEC A30 there. This is normally where I paint. That's my Batmobile that I'm doing at the moment. Got some posters on the walls. This is where I display some of the models that I print and paint. That's my PC that I use for slicing and everything. That's my stress banana because, you know, why not? Uh, that's just over there at the moment because that's where, um, that's just where it needed to go so I could fit the thing on. Underneath here, that will be where this goes. So it'll be completely out of the way. There's power in the back of that that goes into the next side. So that is where that will, that is where it will eventually go. It's not gonna stay on the desk, just on the desk for the time being so that I can uh, figure out what I need to, um, what I need to do to get this thing up and running. So that is the first part and we'll see where we get once we've gone to the QR code. 
Okay, so QR code was something of a dud. Um, it takes you to something called QQ, which I believe is um, like an instant chat network, um, obviously in China. Uh, it's all in Chinese. Most of it is pictures, not actual text, so you can't translate it. And when you do try to register, it just says the server is busy at the moment. So, uh, so that's going to be a, a sort of a fairly obvious non-starter for now. What I have done is I did take, I took the plunge, I pressed home, it homed the plate. This is not a physical switch at the back. Um, it's a capacitive one, which is interesting. An interesting move, not a physical switch like you would see. Uh, uh, there we go. So most Z stops, X, you know, Y stops, or, or the, 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 the switches are, are physical trigger switches. This is not, this is a capacitive one. Interesting. Um, this plate, as I suspected, is not yet level. I mean, you can probably see from the video already, but you can pass paper under this side sort of quite quite freely but not under this side so I assume the way you adjust that is you essentially you undo these four bolts aside here and that would allow you to move the build plate as 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 you need to front and back and left and right so um, I guess I'm going to give that a go. What I'll probably do is I shall pop this, I'll, I'll take, I'll undo the screws, I'll pop this underneath, lay it down, and uh, and I'll allow it to, um, to, to, to zero to, to this, and then that should mean the build plate is level, and I'll do up the nuts and we'll, we'll try again, see how that goes. Okay, so that seems to have worked. My paper is moving pretty freely underneath it. So only two points that are catching and they are here and here and that is where there is a silver tape that goes around the outside of this um, and and that has a small bump in it where that tape I don't know if I can show you we'll go up you can see where the screen actually is there's a small there's a small bump so we won't be able to print directly to the very edges of this build plate. Um, I did say earlier that it's got quite a large build volume, so it, it, it's 200 on the Z, it's 135 on the Y, which is front to back, and it's 216 on the X, left to right, um, or right to left, whichever one you feel better about. So what I did to level the build plate is I loosened off all of these nuts here, um, that allows the build plate to move both up and down and tilt a little bit. Um, I put this piece of uh, slightly thicker card on the screen and I put it actually on the screen rather than over these um, silver bits here. Um, and I honed the printer. That allowed the build plate to move freely. So as the build plate rested on this bit of card, I then did up these nuts nice and tight and now when you press home my um, my bit of paper moves freely there so I, I'm fairly confident that's about as level as I'm going to get it so bearing in mind I see no USB or SD card slots that are painfully honest obvious to me um, I guess the next step is to hook this up to an Ethernet and see if we can get this on the network so that we can send it STL files and we'll try doing um, so the Anycubic Photon comes with like a comes with like a, a, a cube that's got a, like a lattice cube in it um, it's pretty good and uh, and it's a fairly quick print thing to bear in mind with this with I mean, again, I keep calling this an SLA printer. It isn't really. It's a DLP printer, as far as I understand it, or even an LCD printer. I'm sure someone will be happy to correct me on that. Um, it doesn't matter how much you fill the build plate up, front to back or left to right. If you are doing a cube this big and it is 10 layers down, that will take as long as doing 20 cubes, providing they are all the same height. The thing that takes the, the thing that 
is your that takes your time on a printer like this is height not the overall volume so if I filled the entire build plate or I just did a small cube right in the middle if they were the same Z height they would take the same amount of time in this printer to print so you can print relatively large items if you were to lay them, I say relatively large, that's contextual obviously, it's nowhere near as big as the build volume of a CR or of the A30, but you could print parts, you could print 10 parts along this in the same time you could print one part if they were all the same part, because they're all the same height. Okay, so anyway, so I'm going to give it a go trying to get this onto the network and I will update you after that. Okay, so I am now starting to print a simple lattice cube. Um, Nano DLP is a little bit, if you've used it before, it's fine. If you're new to it, it can be a little bit daunting. So the first thing is that when you log into this on this printer, um, the setup is actually... Um, Uh, the, set up, the setup is where you will change the settings. The whole thing at the moment when it's on to begin with is um, all seems to be in, uh, let me just close that up, there we go. Dirty already, brilliant. The whole thing's actually in, um, in Chinese again. So you go to setup, this box here which is the second one down, you select that and English is the first one. English is the only language on there, other than Chinese, that for some reason is completely in Chinese characters. Super annoying, really difficult to find. So I had to change to Spanish first, so that I could figure out what on earth English was, and then I, fit, then I found it, so that's fine. Um, theoretically, this does have Wi-Fi. I haven't managed to get the Wi-Fi working yet. Um, it's, uh, so this is now on, on an Ethernet. Uh, I will more than likely keep it on an Ethernet. I've had a conversation with one of my friends, and he's um, he's saying basically that uh, that the that the Wi-Fi can sometimes not be very secure. Ethernet is, so um, I've just plugged in one of my Linksys nodes over here and just hardlined Etherneted it. It's still going down in this cupboard over here, so I'm just gonna it, it, it'll be fine. I'll just put the Linksys in there, and it won't be a problem. Um, this, in theory, is now doing its first print, which is going to be a lattice cube. I'll very quickly bring that up. Um, because this is a um, because this is one of the models you can get. So look, it's just like that. Requires no supports. Now there doesn't see there isn't a slicer on this on Nano DLP. So I've been advised to use. Um, I've been advised to use, uh, I think it's called Chitu Box. I think is the, um, I think I think Chitu Box. So anyway, I, I'm going to give that a go. I, I haven't used it before, so uh, so I'll have to set it all up and everything, get it all working. But um, but yeah, so um, that if we go to Nano DLP, that will give me an update on where we are. So that will tell me it's doing layer two now. ETA 12 minutes 26, I guess. So, oh. Apparently there's issues detected on layer 827. No idea what that is, but it's printing anyway. So, uh, so yeah, much like with the photon, um, you won't know whether or not it's printing until it gets up above the um, up above the actual build volume build plate. Because, sorry, not build plate. Sorry, the uh, the resin tank because the resin tank's quite deep. So yeah, so I'm just gonna leave it now. There's apparently 1,515 layers, <laughs> which is interesting. So yeah, so we'll just. Um, We'll let it we'll let it go and we'll see how it comes out.